Hi everybody, this is Rob Redman of 3D World and in this video I'm just going to talk you through setting up uh, custom short shortcuts on your keyboard and how to add icons to your interface and kind of customize that a little bit. Um, okay, so first off let's go through what uh, is in the actual article itself. So I'm going to go to Window Layout and then down to Command Manager and you can see here that Shift plus S F12 is the keyboard shortcut to open up that manager. And what this gives you is this window here um, and in this list is every command that you have available to you in Cinema 4D uh, and there's rather a lot so trying to navigate your way through that massive list and find what you want can be a little bit of time consuming so I'm going to just use the name field up here to find what I want and I'm just going to start typing extrude and you can see that as I type anything that's got the letters I type in the name of the command will show up in this list um, and I want to change the extrude inner so I'm going to select it and you can tell it's selected because the uh, details across here all turn orange now to actually change the command what I need to do is at the moment you can see that the original command is in there I'm going to click in that field once and you can see the cursor the orange cursor means that, that has happened and I'm going to press shift D like so and you can see this is what I've typed in there so whatever command or kind of combination of key keyboard um, keys you put in there is what will show there I'm just going to hit a sign now we've got MW is one shortcut and shift D is the other uh, the MW the M brings up let me just show you let's move that out of the way so let's just add a cube to the scene and hit C to make that editable which is the same as hitting this icon over here at the top left um, so this is now editable polygon object. I'm just going to go into polygon mode and select a face. Um, and if I was to hit the V key, this will bring up my menus hotbox. And in here, I've got all my different menus from the top of the, the interface across here. Now I want to go to structure because it's the structure of the object I want to change. And I could choose extrude inner. And you can see that I've got M followed by W is one shortcut and then my new one shift D is there as well or I can click this button um, so what does MW do differently to shift D well let's start by hitting shift D and you should see what it does so shift D you can see that next to my cursor I've got the extrude inner tool just showing there and if I click and drag to the left you can see what's happening that's extruding without any depth okay so I'm just going to undo that control Z and I'm going to just hit spacebar to drop that tool so now back to my normal selection tool as you can see up here and I'm going to hit MW now if you see when I hit M I get this menu come up and this is anything which is associated with um, well, it's basically polygon tools so in fact if I just hit M from up here you see that whole list now that list will only stay until you move the, the cursor so as soon as I move the cursor it disappears but you can see fourth up is extrude inner so if I now hit W with that menu showing I get the same tool so there are a few useful different ways of navigating your commands um, and it means that you can do things like hide a lot of these windows so you don't have to have them visible um, you can see here that my timeline uh, windows and controls are shut down or just minimized so I can access them easily um, but I don't need to worry about them getting in the way and it just means that if I'm working on an object I can do it without being cluttered which brings me on to the next part of what I wanted to talk about and that's these little dotted lines so up here uh, let's do the material one first where I've got this dotted grid I can click that and you can see there's a few options there I can undock it which makes it into a floating window which I can then move around if I had a second monitor and this setup I could put that over on there uh, which I don't want to do um, but I want to dock it again so I'm just going to click on there and you can see where the line the white line appears I can just pop that back and it's now a docked window again or I can control click with the, my left button to minimize it the same way as these tools these palettes here are minimized so control click and it disappears. I'll do the same with the coordinates window. More space again. I can even do it with our icons down the left here for the various selection methods. 
If I wanted to, I could do it with a toolbar across the top with all my different palettes and with my object manager and attribute manager. Now, if you really want to use all this amount of space, then you can hit control and tab, uh, which will go into full screen. Now, this is gone to the full size of my monitor um, just because I've reduced the size of my interface for this video. Um, but I'm going to hit control tab again just to bring that back. Uh, and what that did is it made everything disappear. In fact, if I do it again, you can see everything has disappeared. It's not even got minimized palettes here. Um, they're all gone. All I have is my main menu across the top and my viewport menu here. Um, and working in this mode, it's kind of like using expert mode in some of the Autodesk apps. Uh, it kind of thinks that you've memorized all your keyboard shortcuts um, or you're just going to rely on using the hotbox and the uh, different methods here. So the selection menu is the U key, which will bring up all your different selection tools. Um, and you can see that uh, we've got a W here at the bottom of the or fourth up from that list. And that's because all the keys are used in various different menus in different ways. So U brings up A through to Z or Z. Um, and the same with W will also do that. So M will bring up the um, polygon tools so there are lots of different methods for doing it now I'm just going to go back to press control tab to bring back my menus here and I'm just going to click on these with the left mouse button to open everything up again bring that one back and I will bring back my attributes manager and my object manager I'll bring back the main toolbar as well so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press shift F12 to open up my command manager which is off screen at the moment, so I'll just bring that back. And what I want to do is, say I like using icons. Some people prefer to actually click a button and rely on shortcuts. So how do you then get a command added to your interface like this? Well, actually, it's quite easy. All you do is from the command manager, Event if you click and hold has been updated. on your command in the list here, you'll see that all of these icons get a dark blue border around them and that means that your interface is editable at that time. So you can see that I've picked it up, um, I've got my button hold down still and you can see that the cursor's got a little plus sign next to it and that means that I'm holding the command that I chose and you can see the little white line appears between various icons. So now I would choose where I want to put it and I think, and you can see I've got three commands that aren't there by default already uh, and that's the camera the null and the xref and that's because I use those a lot I just added them to the top main part of my interface okay so I'm going to put this just down here and you can see all I did is let go of the mouse button and there it is now there is another way you can do this so if you wanted to have all your extrude tools in one easy to use palette uh, I could just say I'm gonna have a new palette here this is an empty palette and I'm going to click and drag my extrude, drop that there. I'm going to use my matrix or my MoGraph extrude tool, pop that in. I'll do the same with my new extrude inner, which is my shift D command. Same with extrude nerves, which probably wouldn't go in there because it's not really an extrude tool. Um, and my matrix extrude is that one. Helps if I actually put it in there, like so. So then I can grab that I can resize it, put it where I want, and then I'm just going to, well, before I edit those palettes, if I wanted to have all the extrudes there and then say I wanted to split this, so I had maybe a bevel tool and a, you know various different things here, I could have my knife tool in there, I could add a separator, um, and then I can start messing around and adding different different cuts there. <laughs> Okay, so let's close down the command manager and I've now got this palette. I'm actually just going to bring that back. Um, and what I can do with this is I've already got this undocked. Um, so I've got different options. Let's just bring this up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just clicking on there, right clicking. I can have icons or text, which means you've got various different ways of viewing what your tools are and this is quite useful while you're learning uh, what the icons mean. Um, you can also have them to go vertical. Um, you can 
uh, transpose them so they go the other way. That's what you need to do to make them go vertical. They don't always work like so. Uh, if I change that there, you can see that the text, uh, the vertical option, let's just explain this more clearly. Transpose will change the icon layout from horizontal to vertical, but if I change the vertical option here, it actually changes whether the text and the icon together are vertical or horizontal. Now, because this new palette that we've created has the dotted lines on, I can click them and I can add that palette to somewhere else. So let's say I wanted to add it to the end here. I can do that and I can move them out of the way uh, and I can scrub through here I can change the, the size of it uh, I'm going to undock that again and I think what I might do is I might tab it so I'm just going to hold down control and there you see it's kind of embedded itself in here now I'm not going to keep this in my layout so I'm just going to get rid of this because that's not quite what I want my layout to, to look like. Uh, one thing that I do usually have in my layouts, and I'm just going to minimize my controls because I don't use them all of the time while I'm setting up, is uh, my MoGraph palette down here. So I'm just going to, and all I did there is right clicked it to, to bring it out, and I'm going to grab it from there and pop it at the side. Um, but I will just control click it to hide it. Saying that, I might just make the, them vertical like this. Um, and you can see that these go off. I can't get down to what's below tracer. Um, and the way to do that is you'll see these dividers. These are the separators that you saw in command manager. I can grab there and just move them around. But for now, let's just hide that. So you've got this new command layout and interface layout. Uh, you'll also notice I've got my render settings and my content browser uh, all tabbed here so I don't have to go finding the right window um, I don't have to go and load the content browser from here which you can do you could just bring up a new window like that but I can just tab between it um, and on my other machine that I use more often for Cinema 4D I actually have Espresso and uh, a few different managers there and a different layout um, but that's a dual monitor um, set up and I have timelines and a, an extra viewport um, over on my left hand monitor with space for uh, reference images things like that okay so once you've got the layout the way you want it I'm just going to go to window and you can go layout and you can either save your layout as the startup layout so every time you start Cinema 4D it will open with that layout uh, which is good that's what I want because that's how I like to work um, but you can also save your layout and you can save it as whatever you want uh, give it a name and now this would be maybe my kind of initial staging setup. So I could call this staging and I like to give it a number in case I have a couple. So I'm just gonna call that staging one, hit save. And then you can either go, if you're doing different tasks, you can change your layout. So I can go up to window, layout, load layout, or you can see I've got the list here. So this has got all my different layouts that I've saved and the defaults that come with it. Now, you don't actually need to come over to that manager or that, that menu. You can just click on this icon and you've got all the same there. Now, this is gonna to be too big for this screen capture uh, recording, but if I go to modeling, you can see this has changed here and what is actually happening. If I just increase the size here, I hope you can see this is this is one of the built-in Maxon templates, which is a modeling template. And you can see that they've kind of sensibly put all of the different modeling tools across here. Um, again, they're a bit wide for this window and you can see it was just cutting off the edge there. But if you're modeling, this is a great way of working. Uh, same again, you've got all the different tools. You've got animation tools, which I'm just gonna do exactly the same again. Now, when I reduce the size, it doesn't look quite as sensible, but for an animator, this is quite a good way of working as well. You've got your timeline there. Um, like, like I said, uh, I actually use um, two monitors uh, for my normal work, um, which would make this a bit redundant because I have my timeline big on another screen. 
Okay, so I'm going to go back to my startup layout, which is the one that we just saved. Um, I could also go uh, to staging one, which is the same. Now that's gone back to my Rob's user one, which always starts with content browser because I have um, libraries of preset scenes and things that I like to use. So I'm going to go to staging one, which is our previously saved one. And there we go.